Good morning, everybody. It is August 10th today. Um, as you can clearly see, the yard is empty. The guys moved out yesterday afternoon. We were up throwing some hoppers down there at the North Farm. We just got back here this morning. Uh, the first two to three days is always a crapshoot, uh, meaning that it's always a bit of a gong show. You're trying to, you know, brush the rust off everything. You're trying to train new operators. You're trying, you're, you're finding out if you left any loose bolts or nuts in your winter maintenance program on whatever you did. And that doesn't matter whether it's harvest or seeding time. First few days in is always a bit rough. And then once you uh, iron out all those details, uh, typically you're off to the races. So um, we're going to head down. John Deere is gonna be uh, meeting us down at our location. They're going to kind of run me through this combine a little bit so I can kind of figure it out. And then uh, we'll be off to the races. So let's go join up with the rest of the crew. I got myself some berries for breakfast. I do have carpet in here. We will not remove the plastic from the carpet until the John Deere boys have left. Because I feel like there's going to be a lot of in and out. And then that way you can vacuum and clean and leave your shoes in one spot. So until that time, it will stay status quo. Don't know why I shut the door like that because it has soft closed doors. I'm never gonna get used to that, I don't think, in a combine. But anyways, coffee in hand, water over there. We're golden. I guess maybe we should uh, put down our hopper topper, eh? See here, unlock that puppy. Zoom me in here. Let's shut it. goes all right Mike are you gonna fold your auger and your spout and stuff back not unless it makes me not unless it makes me all right we're in put ourselves in gear two here give ourselves a little rpm seat belt on we're safety first camp you guys always know that Mike is very safety orientated Right, but we are not full safety until we have our beacons on. You gotta have your beacon. Hazard lights, no, don't worry about those. But beacons, for sure, you gotta have those. All right. My younger brother paid this runway. I don't know if you can see that. He's gotta put lines in it yet, but he's still not quite done. He's gotta do some landscaping around the edges. Stay on the road here, it's a good thing. All right, I'll see you at the field. You know, I was just thinking, as I'm driving down this road here, remember when I was saying, you know, I got my coffee, I got my water, you know, I got my lunch in the refrigerator down there, you know, everything, I got everything that I need, right? Wrong. What's the... What's the most common thing that Mike always forgets? Every time, always forgets. If you said, Hammy, the mic, you would be close, but I did bring that. My cell phone charger. Classic Mike, I forgot my cell phone charger. My battery's already down to 75% because, you know, doing videos takes a lot of juice. And uh, so, and we're not, right, it's not like we're right beside the farm, you guys. I can't just pop out and quickly run to my pickup truck. And you're like, well, why don't you get one of the drivers to bring down your charger? Oh, I, oh, I will. But when you're rocking with an eight or 10 bushel crop and you've got a couple drivers down here, they're not gonna get back to the farm anytime soon. Classic. All right, we just got to the field here. Um, I was playing around with my reel, up, down. And it goes up, but it won't go down. <laughs> uh, it'll go out, you know. And I go in, my header goes up and down, my header even tilts, but my reel won't go down. Not getting off to an awesome start here, it must be airlocked, that's probably what the problem is. And just like that we're cutting. So Jason, uh, he was down with us pretty much half the day, it's, I don't know what time it is right now, it's 3pm pretty much. 
We had a little bit of trouble getting the reel up. In fact, we never did get it to go back up and come back down. We managed to uh, drain the oil of it to drop the reel. Uh, but there's got to be a sticky valve somewhere. What you're hearing right now, if you hear that, uh, is the reversible fan going. But anyways, so we got to get that fixed so we can have some reel adjustment. We, we got four and a half, but we just can't lift it up and down. Oh, I can lift it up. I just can't get it back down. <laughs> Got some mirrors here to see into your grain tank. We are currently cruising at about whoa, sorry about that, seven mile an hour. And this engine only revs to 1900 RPM. That's that 13.6 liter engine. Supposedly, I asked, it's a whole new block. It's not a retweaked 13.5 with new technology. It's supposed to be a whole new block and everything. So on the S series combines, they're 13.5 liter engines. And on the 1000 and the 1100, uh, it's the 13.6 liter engine. Difference is that they just have it turned up a little bit more on the 1100. Obviously you can tell we're hardly cutting any crop. It's going all up 10 bushel. And that's basically what we expected. So, we are all shared mapping here. So the dark blue is me, and the light blue is the uh, other combines. That's how that works. Takes back to our main screen. When you see this light blue color down here, that means that it's auto adjusting. So uh, we have it on so that way, if you're going down a hill or whatnot, or climbing up a hill, Maybe if you're going up a hill, it'll reduce the fan speed so it's not so easy to blow it out the back, so on and so forth. So that's what all that's doing. We're in a, some mild hills here. So it is adjusting the uh, settings of the combines accordingly. We've pretty much, like we got, we're gonna do a lot of videos, you guys, so don't, don't worry about that. But uh, we've been tinkering with our sample just a little bit, not very much. We actually have only closed down the concave and the bottom sieve a little bit from the factory setting. So the factory setting was very dang close, very dang close. And we can't get it perfect because it's really hard to get a clean sample on a poor yielding crop because you can't fill the combine. But, like I said, 10 bushel uh, Durham, this is Durham by the way, uh, and probably 40 bushel grasshoppers. But we have cleaned the grasshoppers out, so if I go with George, we can at least do that. <laughs> and then right over here, here's our yield. Top one, that 10.7. Uh, sorry, that top one is our moisture. The bottom one there is our yield. So we're between eight no, honestly, I don't think and I we've been down to six. Cool. It's, it's gonna be averaging around that 10, I hope. I hope it averages 10, why not? So I'm still trying to figure this out. Um, obviously, I haven't run this new control arm, the joystick here, so that's a lot different for me. Um, you can customize your settings. I haven't done that yet. I just kind of want to get a feel for it before I start customizing a little bit. Obviously, your header has lots of different settings. We haven't done a lot of adjustments yet on those. We're basically just kind of bare bones in it here a little bit trying to get a feel for the combine, trying to get a feel for how, it, for how it runs, how it contours, and then we can start tweaking as the days go on. One thing we do not have is numbers on all the combines, like uh, talk about an oversight. We ha I have no idea who's running what out there. But it does help that, so this combine coming up here is Rick. So it does show that. But it only shows that, I do believe, with the new S790s. Uh, the S690s and the S680s, which are 2015, 2017s, whatever they are. Um, I don't believe I can see them on the map. Just the newer ones are the only ones that can share right now. So that's Rickles. And again, we have the 50-foot honeybees on those. And uh, if 
if you're wondering, well, how fast are they going, Mike? They're going the exact same speed. Again, we're not filling a combine. We're, we wouldn't fill a 9600 out here with a 50-foot header. You wouldn't. You could put a 50-foot header on a 9600 combine. Yeah, pick the back end on the ground, but you're not going to fill it. So really, we just basically set a speed. And uh, if we have green operators, we're like six mile an hour as fast as you go. Or if they're you know really green, four and a half mile an hour as fast as you go. That's it. That's all it is. You just basically set a speed and go. So that's what we've done. I'm doing seven. I kind of feel that's fairly comfortable speed. You can only go as fast as you can cut it cleanly. Uh, you can only go as fast as you can ride it in the combine. Obviously, we don't like grain carts going over 10 miles an hour. So don't think we're going to let a expensive combine get up to that speed. So this is probably about as fast as we're going to go. Anytime you hit badger holes, you got to hopefully foresee that, in which you can because you can see right through that crop. There's a badger hole. It is a little bit of a bump. Obviously, you're also scanning the area for rocks. But yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, you guys. We got our Netflix up here. No. <laughs> oh man. I'm gonna be looking forward to strip this carpet off. Well, not the carpet. This plastic off the carpet, and we'll take our shoes off. That'll be for tomorrow. We'll come prepared for that. Our ideal combines also had the reversible fan. Always, but it sounds different. The, the John Deere and the ideals, they sound different. So it takes me about a day or two to get used to that. I guess I should also say when I was pointing out that this combine only runs at 1900 RPM, I do believe that the 13.5 and the S series run 2200 RPM. Something like that. And obviously, you guys know that the X9 is a twin rotor. Obviously, you know that already. I do believe that they're two 24-inch rotors. I think that's what the ideals were as well. And on the S series, I think it's like a it's one 30-inch rotor. It's 30 or 32? 30. I want to say 30. I guess I could have Googled the stats. Well, you guys can Google the stats too. And the hopper, uh, it's 400 bushel on the S series. It's only 420 on this X. But if you get the 1100, it has a little higher tops, I guess, and it's about 11, sorry, I want to say 1160, that'd be a heck of a hopper. 460 bushels. So I do miss the big hopper, because on our ideals, we were 480 bushels. And obviously on the claws with the tracks, you'd go up over 500, I think. So, that's disappointing. And I, uh... I've only, I haven't even dumped on the go yet because, well, I've only dumped one time because all we're doing there. is just going up and back here. Let me hold, gonna hold riding. Turn that radio off. Um, I do have a movable spout, so that's kind of nice. Ooh, that was a 100 round rock. I guess I better pay attention a little bit what I'm doing. There's a dead head sticking up in the air. No, not Trudeau. I'm talking about a rock in the soil here. Um, we have a little dial under there, a little round dial. Uh, you can tip your spout up and down like a CNH combine. So that's kind of handy. I thought that was just a CNH thing, but I guess that's, done. that's, that's a John Deere thing now. <laughs> Heck, I thought the folding auger thing was just CNH over here in the North America. That's also John Deere now. Oh, man. <laughs> Anyways, I look forward to doing some videos with you guys. Um, we'll do some walk arounds. We'll get in depth. I have all small wires in the concaves, if you're wondering. I think I got two filler plates up front. So, yeah. see who this is. Emily. That's Emily up there in that combine. So that's kind of cool. And I think you can share lines and all that fun stuff. Not that I normally do that. I like to throw everybody off. They're all sharing their lines, trying to be skipping passes, and Mike's like dropping a new line. <laughs> oh, I'm hated. Anyways, I gotta let you guys go. You have yourself a great one, and I'll see you uh, probably in a day or two. Adios, amigos.